Yeah, hi guys, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, do you need to fully understand who Jesus is um, to hear the gospel message, so to gain salvation? Uh, well, the answer is yes, most certainly. So, um, you have things like people, people disagree on who Jesus is, so unless you can understand fully who he is right um yeah it's it's not gonna bode well so i'll show you what i what i mean there so you you've got groups like uh or i'll say arians so arians uh deny christ so they they um they'll say they they um accept him but they don't know who christ is so how can they accept something they don't know who he is? So you'll see uh, here. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Alright, so that sounds pretty serious. So who is the Christ? Let's have a look. So you got there, G5547. So it means anointed. And then, so you can have the people say, yeah, he's anointed. That's what it means. So, um, Jesus was anointed. Well, <coughs> thing is, uh, <coughs> you can have, uh, he's also the Messiah and anointed. So there's two things there, the anointed Messiah. Um, you can see here, people that are as for you the anointing which you received from him abides in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you but his anointing teaches you but his anointing teaches you about all things all right but you have an anointing from the holy one so it sounds like lots of people have anointings um do not touch my anointed ones so there's more uh, anointed ones lots of them so so this is why you can see why they'll go, yeah, well, Jesus was just a man who was anointed. <clears throat> so you've got um, anointed Messiah. So we've got to understand who the Messiah is. All right, so where do we start off? So you start off with the, in the beginning, of course. To explain who this man is, or this this person is, who come to save us, and how he can take our sins. How can a man come and take our sins? All right. So you got here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All right. He existed in the beginning with God. Who did? Jesus existed in the beginning with God. All right. All things were made by him, and without him not anything was made that was made. Alright, so everything that exists, or and anything, is made by Jesus. Alright. Um, <clears throat> John used the Greek word logos to describe Jesus in the beginning, or before creation and time began. Logos means word but specifically it means a spoken word or a statement jesus is god's spoken word according to john john then explains that the word jesus was with god and was god this statement yields two important um, important conclusions regarding jesus and the trinity jesus is god and existed from the beginning as god Yet Jesus' exist existence is somehow distinct from God the Father. All right? Jesus was with God, and God was God at the same time. This is very mis the, the mystery of the Trinity. So, yes, God's hard to understand, and if he was easy to understand, then he wouldn't be worthy of being God, I'd say. You know, so he, this is um, the mystery of God. <clears throat> All three persons in the Godhead are one God, and yet are all distinct from each other. Uh, moving to verse 3. John says that it was the word, him, that created all things. So, him. From this statement, we begin to see why Jesus is called the word by John. 
consider the facts we learn from John's Gospel elsewhere in Scripture. First, we know from Scripture that God the Father is spirit, right? meaning he does not exist in physical form, so that there is no physical substance to God the Father. Right? The creation cannot experience the Father as he, he truly is, <clears throat> since we are bound to physical dimensions, yet he is not physical. Secondly, we know that the third member of the Trinity, Holy Spirit, is likewise spirit only and therefore invisible. He can only be known by observing his work in creation. Jesus says in John 3, Therefore Jesus is the only member of the Godhead who takes on physical form, and for that reason he is the member of the Godhead responsible for creating all things physical. As John said in chapter 1, all things were made by him and through Jesus. Paul echoes the same in uh, Colossians there. Okay, so if you have a look in Hebrews, <clears throat> this makes it a little bit more clearer. But unto the Son, he says, this is the Father speaking. Oh, this is Father. But unto the Son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Right. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, this is Jesus, he's calling God, even thy God, that's God the Father, talking about himself, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all fellows. So when Jesus took on human form, the Father um, had to become his God so that Jesus could fulfill the um, be, f fulfill David, the David prophecy line thing. <clears throat> okay, so, um, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundations of the earth. So, uh, Lord Jesus laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. So, his hands have made the heavens and the earth. All right, and if you note, you'll see this is how in the Old Testament you say, Well, that's the New Testament, you know. That, well, well, this is in the Old Testament as well. Thy throne, O God, is f forever and ever, and the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou hast lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Of the so that's in Psalms. All right, 45. So this is Father God calling his Son God. All right. Now, um, the salvation thing, so you'll, you'll go, well, okay, so sin, nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry or dishonesty, but those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So, um, sin and lies and all that sort of stuff won't enter into his kingdom, okay, so... <clears throat> so then, Gen... Uh, so knowing this, all right, sin, sin can't enter into the kingdom. Um, we'll see who, go back to Jesus again. How's he going to get us into his kingdom? Uh, then answered the Jews and, and said to him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. All right, I'll just emphasize there, I, okay, I will raise it up. So when he's talking about a temple, right, he's he's talking about his body. He's not talking about obviously he's not talking about the temple that's standing around him there, the big brick one. He's talking about his temple, which is his body. And he says, I will raise it up. He's claiming he will do it. Alright. So for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, so he's um, our Lord before he dies as well. All right, so they're claiming he is Lord, which is God, before he dies. Yeah, that's a gift of God. <clears throat> if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, so confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord God. This is the bit that's important. When you're confessing, 
that the, uh, with your mouth that the, that Jesus is is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, I, I will raise it up. So believe in your heart that God raised it from the dead, you will be saved. All right. So um, these things here are important to realize because uh, Arians. Uh, we'll say no Jesus is just a man and the father um, raised him up um, so Jesus is just a guy that the father put some sins on right and he's taken the sins if he became sin for us does not mean Jesus was sin or a sinner or guilty of sin the proper interpretation can only be found in the doctrine of Im imputation this is confirmed by the second part of 2 Corinthians 5.21 So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. To impugn something is to ascribe or attribute it to someone on the cross. Our sin was given to Christ or impugned to Christ. That is how Christ paid our sin debt to God. He had no sin in himself but our sin was imputed, attributed to him as he suffered he took the just penalty that our sin deserves at the same time through faith Christ's righteousness is imputed on us now that we can stand before God sinless just as Jesus is sinless we are not righteous in ourselves rather Christ's righteousness is applied to us all right yeah so you, you can't enter heaven with sin all right so this is how we get to enter heaven with uh, with Jesus taking on our sin for, for us and, and this way we can stand before the Father <clears throat> so God made him to be sin for us means that Jesus although sinless was treated as, treated as if he were not although he remained holy he was regarded as guilty for all the sin of the world through in, imputation of our sins unto him he became our substitute and the recipient of God's judgment against sin. Having saved those who believe, he is now our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Alrighty, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's in, it's just as important to know and understand uh, the gospel than just receive it. So, you know, people will say, yeah, yeah, okay, I accept it. Um, but you got to know who it is that's that's giving you this to you. Otherwise, you're, you're ex you you might be um, giving credit to Satan. All right, so <clears throat> um, that's not good. Don't do that. <laughs> Understand, it's God that came to save you. All right, no, no one else. God came to save you. He's he's the one who gave his only begotten Son. All right, he um. He loved us that much. He himself came. Alright, so the creator of all things came to save us. So that's what makes it even more incredible and amazing story. <clears throat> to know that the truth of it. Alright, so we... Um, yeah, just love the truth. Alright, I hope that helps. God bless.